The focus of today's gospel, as of yesterday's, is on Judas and his betrayal of Jesus. In order to underline the enormity of what Judas did, Matthew introduces him as one of the twelve, one of that inner group of disciples whom Jesus chose and associated in a special way with himself and his ministry. Although the Gospels differ somewhat in the way they describe the motivation and fate of Judas, all agree on the role he played in the arrest of Jesus. His action unleashes the process that will lead to Jesus' condemnation and death. The image of Judas in the Gospel is somewhat paradoxical. The suffering and death of Jesus are willed by God for our salvation and are embraced as such by Jesus. Looking back at all that had happened, Paul emphasizes that it was out of love that Jesus gave himself for us, and that in doing so became a perfect sacrifice to God. At the same time, his death was the result of the actions of various people, including Judas. His betrayal of Jesus is part of a larger pattern of failure on the part of the disciples. Peter denies Jesus three times, and according to both Mark and Matthew, all the male disciples abandon him and flee when he is arrested. The presence of such accounts of failure in the Gospels of Holy Week invite us to reflect on ourselves and our lives. To betray, deny, and abandon Jesus are things in regard to which we all in various ways, are tempted. It may involve denying our faith, or at least restricting it to the private and personal dimensions of life. It may mean acting in ways that are at odds with everything that Jesus lived and died for. Whatever the temptations we face, we should approach the liturgies of Holy Week as occasions for us to confront and with God's help to overcome them. The Gospel today once again emphasizes that the great events that mark the climax of the life of Jesus take place within the context of the Jewish Passover. For Jews, the Passover recalls and celebrates and in some sense renders present among them the saving act of God in liberating their forebears from slavery in Egypt. From the beginning, Christians saw in the death and resurrection of Jesus a new Passover. In that single double-sided event, God's saving power was once again at work in the world, bringing about liberation, this time not from physical, but from spiritual and moral slavery. Just as Jews look back to the Exodus as the event that both constituted them as a people and revealed their God to them as a God of salvation. So Christians recall the death and resurrection of Jesus as the key to their faith and to their relationship with God. In baptism, we were plunged for the first time into the Paschal mystery, into the death and resurrection of Jesus, so that we might die to sin and selfishness and rise to a life modeled on his life and animated by his spirit. The Eucharist, the heart and soul of our shared religious life, makes memory of and celebrates and draws us into that same mystery. After the priest repeats the words of Jesus from the Last Supper, we are all invited to proclaim the mystery of our faith. Although the wording varies, it always includes a reference to his death and resurrection. Initially, the annual celebration of the Christian Passover took place on a single day, on Easter. Gradually, other celebrations were added until we reached the form of Holy Week that we now have. It's different liturgies allow us to focus on now one and now another aspect of the one mystery. On Holy Thursday, for example, we recall the Last Supper of Jesus and with it the institution of the Eucharist. 
The words that he says over the bread and the wine transform a part of the, of the Jewish ritual and make it the key element of Christian worship. The Eucharist is a kind of Passover meal in which we make memory of, give thanks for, and render present among us the healing and life-giving power of the death and resurrection of Jesus. The liturgy of Good Friday focuses on the suffering and death of Jesus and includes a ceremony of venerating the cross on which he hung. To understand how paradoxical and even scandalous to outsiders such veneration might appear, one needs only to recall that in the ancient world, the cross was an instrument of public execution. Its modern counterpart would be something like an electric chair. The only reason we celebrate the death of Jesus is because we believe that it was not the last word about his life. Without Easter, there would be no point to Good Friday. Jesus would have been one more decent human being, one more prophet, crushed by the power of evil at work in the world. It is the message of the resurrection that reveals the saving significance of the cross. Had we written the script, salvation would probably have come about through a manifestation of power and in the midst of public acclaim, and not as it did through things that to us seem negative and pointless, betrayal and abandonment, suffering and death. By entering as he did into the depths of human experience, Jesus redeems and gives meaning to all dimensions of our lives. Easter is the triumph that it is only because it follows Good Friday. And so it is with our celebration of it. In order for the Easter liturgy, whether in its Sunday morning or its fuller and more solemn form on Saturday evening, for it to bear its fruit in us, we must first pass by the way of the cross. Only if we do will we be able to experience the joy and peace that Easter proclaims and bestows. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs for all of us that our sharing in the liturgies of Holy Week will deepen our faith in the saving power of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those involved in our CIA programs across our country and especially for those who will be baptized at this year's Easter Vigil, let us pray to the Lord. For Christians everywhere, that their celebration of Easter will bring about a renewed commitment to the gospel of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the deceased members of our families and for those who are condemned to die this week alone, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, accept the gifts we present as we celebrate this mystery of the suffering and death of your Son. May we share in the eternal life he won for us, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. 